सर प्लीज री एक्सप्लेन दो प्रोटीन इज नथिंग बट अ रिपीटिंग यूनिट ऑफ दीज एटम्स एंड द मेन चेन इज द हार्ट ऑफ द प्रोटीन विच इज द एन सी एल्फा सी प्राइम एन सी एल्फा इट्स रिपीट एंड टू डिफरेंट पीसेस ऑफ एन अमीनो एसिड फॉर्म पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड विच आई विल डिफाइन लिटिल मोर क्लियर okay so these are atoms in space okay and these atoms in space along a polypeptide chain you basically have different side chains that is all that is varying whereas the main chain remains pretty uniform uh, throughout the polypeptide now uh, let me see if i can uh, get explain this to you a little more clearly so the way i am going to explain this to you is to ask you to imagine a xyz grid a three dimensional uh, graph paper with this being let's say the x axis this being the z axis and this being the y axis okay and this is a this is basically coordinate space and in this coordinate space at any point if you have any atom over here and let's just draw a benzene ring sort of ring over here these atoms uh, can be given uh, specific points in the grid of this xyz grid okay so there will be an xyz three dimensional grid and each atom over here can be given a three letter code which corresponds to x y and z so let's just say that for example this atom over here is 2 6 4 okay so you can give specific locations in space in a x y z coordinate plane for any atom in space so now all the structures which are solved by crystallographers uh, and let's just look at one of them let's look at this structure over here for this structure every atom in the structure after the structure was solved using crystallography has been given a specific location in space so this entire structure in a file is nothing but xyz spot for this atom xyz spot for this atom and so on and so forth now we are basically dealing with carbon nitrogen oxygen and sulfur uh, not too many atoms and these atoms are organized in the main chain in a very specific way and all these colorful representations are doing are using the atomic coordinates which i have tried to explain to you using the fact that the uh, folded state of secondary structure of proteins are very standard they are either helices or turns or beta sheets and then represent them uh, as simple pictures which can be appreciated by Uh, people who are not, uh, let us say, specialized. So, for example, the green fluorescent protein over here. If you say that this is where the N-terminus starts, which I am not completely sure of over here, and let us say the C-terminus ends over here, the green fluorescent protein is nothing but a series of beta sheets which are stacking against each other. And this representation, called as a ribbon representation, allows you to visualize what the protein looks like. and remember this is at the level of atoms so you are visualizing it in a simple manner and in the same way you can look at a nucleosome you can look at a ribosomal inhibitor and so on and so forth so the take home over here is that you can visualize a set of coordinates in space which is the folded state of a protein using either a ribbon diagram a space filling diagram a surface diagram or many many other variants are there but you have to remember that all of these are just representations of atoms in space and the exact locations of the atoms in space relative to each other has been done by a crystallographic experiment where x ray crystallographer has purified protein made a crystal pointed x ray beams on that crystal got a diffraction pattern and uh, using a fourier transform and adding the missing phases generated a three dimensional folded protein and the three dimensional state of a folded protein relates to the function the protein does and in the movie you saw some very nice animation of hemoglobin and you saw where the iron atom was and you could understand that the ter tertiary structure of hemoglobin maybe i can just go there basically gives you an idea of its function so shall let's start learn more about the function this is an and as a small organized Collagen for DNA to enter the cell. The body formed with specific 
more oxygen in the lungs and release. So here is a structure of hemoglobin. This is a sort of a tube diagram rather than a ribbon diagram. The main chain is shown as a tube. The side chains are not shown here at all, but you can see all the heme atoms, the four major heme groups, and these are what are going to bind, uh, bind oxygen and carry out function inside the red blood cells of your body. Okay, so was that explanation clear enough? Yes, sir. Oh, was that a yes or a no? Sir, it was really clear. Thank you, sir. Okay, sure. Sir, uh, when you talked about the secondary structures, where you have your alpha and beta sheet. Is there any criteria for protein preferring alpha over beta or different protein preferring beta over alpha? Or there are just two forms simply, no correlation. Okay. In each so, the, so the secondary structure elements are to a large extent defined by the sequence of amino acids. And okay. there will be some sequences which will preferentially fold into a alpha helix. There will be some sequences which will be found only in beta sheets. So you can actually predict not very well. It's not 100% prediction, but let's say 70% prediction. If I give you a linear sequence of amino acids, you can look at the sequence and say, oh, this is going to form an alpha helix. And how can we say that? Because thousands, tens of thousands of protein structures you have been are formed. Not audible between. Okay. Yes, tens and thousands of protein structures have been solved. And uh, one can just look at the sequences of all the structures, all the stretches which have alpha helices and say, we have now looked at 10,000 alpha helices and there is always these four amino acids in alpha helices and they are always in this sequence. Therefore, whenever we see the sequence, it is an alpha helix. Okay. Is that clear? Thank you, sir.